my parents had many nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews who adored them. My cousin Debbie Stewart would like to come up and say a few words about her godmother, T.T. Elba. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank my cousins for inviting me to speak today. My name is Debbie, and I have had the privilege of not only being Alba's niece, but also her goddaughter. Growing up in central Pennsylvania and having a Puerto Rican mother provided me some unique experiences from my peers. In rural Pennsylvania, most of my friends had all their family and extended family living nearby, but I had family all over the country. My peers had aunts and uncles, but I had a Diti. Elba was my Diti. She was the eldest of four children, as you heard. And in many families with multiple children, not only do you have birth order, but you have titles. The youngest in her family was our Aunt Fran, and she was the baby. My mom was next, and she was the tomboy, so I hear. Then our Uncle Ray Monchito, as he was known, was the son, but Elba, or Alba Mare was considered the bookworm. Everywhere she went, she had a book in her hand and she had a lifelong learning um, and thusly became a teacher. Um, a lot of what you're gonna hear me say is some stuff that you've heard over and over again. I thought it was interesting that as I was hearing everybody else, what everybody else said, well, that's kind of what I said too, which made it me realize how real this really is, how, who she was. She was eccentric and larger than life. And I remember she came to Pennsylvania to, to visit us one time, and I had a Girl Scout function. She couldn't wait to come and meet all of our friends. She came dressed to the nines, complete with the flowing gown and all the jewels. <laughs> Not quite the typical dress for those in the mountains of central Pennsylvania. <laughs> but my friends loved it, and so did I. She was a lover of fine spirits. My husband adored T.T. Elba. And when I asked him his favorite memory, he would say, she would wiggle her finger and say, come on over, and he'd go over, and she, he, she'd say to him, you know what I want, and that was his cue to go make her a gin and tonic. <laughs> I asked him how he knew how to make a gin and tonic, because we typically don't drink alcohol. And he said, I don't. I just add a little bit of tonic and a whole lot of gin. <laughs> D.T. Elba was welcoming. When you walked into her home, she always did her best to make you feel welcome. It is no surprise that her one of her favorite decor items was the pineapple. D.T. Elba loved to laugh. She had a young spirit and wasn't afraid to enjoy life and not take things too seriously. When told something upsetting, I remember her shaking her head and saying, oh, unbelievable. <laughs> D.D. Elba loved Elvis. As she went to sleep every night, she would listen to Elvis's gospel greats. Her favorite hymn was Amazing Grace, a song that pays homage to the Lord by providing the message of peace and salvation. I have no doubt that she's in the arms of our Savior today. She loved good food. She loved cooking for her family and will be remembered for her arroz con pollo, vinegar steak with onions, and arroz con gondolas. She enjoyed creating new recipes and created a favorite that our family calls Puerto Rican egg rolls. <laughs> Let's just say, if you know, you know. <laughs> she was a lover of beauty. She loved big hair. And even though she was a natural beauty, she never left the house without makeup and putting her face on. <laughs> she was beautiful. And as we've been looking through the pictures this weekend, it reminded me with a firm reminder of just how beautiful she was. But was even more special was that she was more beautiful on the inside than outside. And that brings me to my conclusion. The only thing that Diti Alba loved more than all of these things was her family. Diti Alba learned that sometimes in life, it doesn't go the way you have it planned. But when life happens, the one thing you can count on is your family. This is where it gets even more personal for me. When I needed to know that I was cared about, D.T. Elba was there. She called, she checked up on me, she made me smile, she loved me. 
She loved unconditionally and without question. She has been an inspiration to me to be better and to do better, to love and live with my whole heart, not only in my family, but also my community. I hope I can make everyone feel the way Diti Alba made me feel. I, everybody that I know has an aunt, but I had a Diti. Thank you. to go make me cry again. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Next, our Aunt Pam, Dad's sister, would like to share some stories about growing up with Mike. Wasn't easy. I'm Pam Tompkins White. Mike's um, sister and only sibling, and beautiful Elba's sister-in-law. I wanted to talk about Mike being raised with Mike in Walnut Creek, uh, but I have to, uh, her, her goddaughter, I have to mention a couple of things about Elba that aren't on my sheet. Unbelievable was something that when mom and dad and I met Elba, we loved her accent when she always, and she would always say, unbelievable. There was this unbelievable. And my father and my mom and I, would we said that for years. And every time there was something, you say, that's unbelievable. <laughs> so when you said that, I thought, oh, yes, I remember that. Also, I stayed with Elba in Puerto Rico when I was 21 and uh, met the kids. And um, it seemed like we had a roast con pollo every night. <laughs> so I had... I got a little tired of it, but you know, I was their guest, and you know, what could I say? And I overstayed my welcome too. So they finally decided to make an, like a meal for me. So one of the things, my least favorite food is pork chops. So I get go come go to dinner one night. They said, "Look what we did for you. They made me pork chops." <laughs> I would, I, would, I would rather have had the roast con pollo. <laughs> but I didn't say anything. I thanked them. <laughs> anyway, I just had to throw that in. <clears throat> but this is my, I wanted to share a little about how it was being raised with, on Walden Road with Mike. Two months before Mike passed, I came out to visit Mike, Michelle, Yvonne, and the kids on Easter, and I spent the night, which I often did on holidays. Mike was very generous and would treat all of us to brunch at his country club. Did he golf? No. <laughs> but, he but he, of course, belonged to a lovely country club that he and Elba and the family enjoyed for years. So this particular Easter, Mike and I had an opportunity to have some alone time in the morning. And we must have talked and reminisced for an hour longer. And the conversation started with Mike declaring, I loved being raised at 1394 Walden. I knew Mike loved his time in Wellman Creek, as I did, but that sincere declaration struck my heart. He, <clears throat> he remembered that we moved to Wellman Creek on his eighth birthday in 1952. We proceeded to reminisce about playing outside for hours with kids that had become long, lifelong friends and how we wouldn't come in until mom rang the cowbell, which meant dinner time, usually exactly at six every night. We talked about how fun and memorable our family dinners were. They could last for hours. Dad sometimes had to time our stories our shared stories because as you who know Mike or me, our stories could become very long and animated. And dad was the worst culprit. Mom was our very best audience, laughed at everything we said, and she had some pretty funny stories too. I'm adding something here. Mike had, and dad even recorded some of our family dinners. 
uh, also with our aunt and uncle and her grandmother and my cousin Mark back there. Um, and we would, when he was stationed in Old San Juan, uh, Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, where he met his lovely wife, Elba, Dad would record some dinners and send the tapes to Mike and PR. He would play them for the other naval officers, and they would laugh and ask, how many people in your family again? It sounds like 20 are all talking at the same time. <laughs> Mike would laugh and say, tell them, no, only three, just my mom, dad, and sister, big talkers. <laughs> Mike was never a very good dresser. He would get ready for a date and come out of his room to get mom and my approval. He'd have a brown shirt on, gray pants, black shoes, <clears throat> and we'd shake our head, uh, -uh. uh So we'd go back in again, try again until we gave him our final approval. Mom and I helped dress him for years, even after he moved out, which mom never thought he would. <clears throat> We'd buy him shirts, sweaters, and vests every birthday and Christmas, his entire life. Some of the shirts and vests he has on in the videos are compliments of mom and me. Something else that we both did that our friends thought was weird yet amazing. When Mike would get home from a date, many times he'd come into my room, wake me up, and tell me all about it. Well, maybe not all about it, but <clears throat> once I was old enough to date, Sometimes we get home around the same time, mid midnight or so, and we both go in and sit on mom and dad's bed, wake them up, and tell them about our dates. <laughs> our par parents always woke up, listened and laughed, until they, fi they finally tell us, go to bed. <laughs> mom and dad weren't perfect, but they were loving, caring, very supportive parents. Good times, for sure. Okay, wait. I'll find my... Ah. However, <laughs> living with Mike could be challenging at times. He was the favorite, better student, most popular, most likely to succeed, student body president, obtained two or three degrees, but I'm here to tell you I am not bitter. <laughs> Did I mention I'm the younger sister? Yep, three years. I know. He got mom's flawless, beautiful skin, and I got dad's dry Irish. But I'm not bitter. He got the largest bedroom with a walk-in closet. I got the porch with a portable. But I'm not bitter. He got really cool hop-along Cassidy wallpaper on every wall of his large bedroom. I got pink and white striped contact paper on the doors of the portable. But I'm not bitter. He was a good, he got good grades. I was dyslexic and didn't. He got a motor, motorized go-kart for Christmas one year, and I got a doll that peed, <laughs> but I'm not bitter. He got a beautiful two-tone green and white 1958 Chevy to drive to school. I got a school bus pass, <laughs> but I'm not bitter. He was admired by his teachers and peers and was elected president of our student body. I was suspended for smoking. <laughs> he got a PhD. I got ADHD. <laughs> but did I mention? I'm not bitter. My brother and I had a difference of opinion on many issues, but he was my big overprotective brother, and I loved him and I miss him very much. <laughs> Let's raise a glass to my big head brother, Dr. Mike, and to his beautiful bride, Elba. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>